G-O-D or O-B-G-Y-N? Let's find out. Welcome to An Atheist Asks, I'm Christy, and in this video I want to lay out the three-part series that I'm going to be putting out in the next couple of weeks that's going to look very carefully at the location of Yahweh and his interaction with women in the first five books of the Bible. As a woman and a former Christian, I'm very interested in that nexus between um, religiosity and patriarchy and atheism. And in this three-part video series, I really want to look more closely at Yahweh's interaction with women in the Bible. Now, part of this is driven because I'm just academically interested in it, but also there is a, a certain pattern that you can see in the US data, I also know in the UK data, that, and I'm sure this is generally consistent, although those are the two countries I, I can speak more confidently about, that women are more likely to identify as spiritual than men are. And according to um, a Pew poll in the US, among the unaffiliated identifiers as a whole in terms of religiosity, 56% are men and 44% are women. In terms of atheist and agnostic identification, they are far more likely to be male. In fact, 64% of people who identify themselves as atheist or agnostics are men, and only 36% are women. So we do have a spiritual gender gap, and I think part of understanding that is to yeah, take a look at religiosity and women's role in, re in religious communities and in the atheist community. Because women, I think, even though they uh, make up the, the body of the, the spiritual body, as it were, they make up the congregation, they're really not represented in the text. And that's what I want to bring out in this video series. Given that women are far more likely to be spiritually inclined and to attend church and be more religious, then it seems worthy of consideration to look at the way that women are treated in the Bible and in other holy texts, but because I'm Westerner and I'm a former Christian, it's easiest for me to go to the Bible first because that's what I know. Even without doing any research, if we just kind of cast our minds to the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian scriptures, there aren't a lot of women that leap to mind that are important and vivid characters. Women are background characters in the Bible, and they really have just supporting roles to the stars, who are the men. Women are talked about, but how often can you think of dialogue that women characters in the Bible have? So even though I've looked around for some videos on women in the Bible, and there are some that focus on personalities. What I was interested in more was the overview, a, a video that would look at the structure of how women are treated over time. But those don't really seem to exist, so I decided I had to make one. In terms of the question that's going to drive this video and the next two videos, it's pretty simple, if not a little bit rude. Basically, does every interaction that a woman has with Yahweh in the Bible center around her vajayjay? Is it, are there any instances where women have a conversation with Yahweh that doesn't involve sex or babies or marriage or anything that deals with women's reproduction, but actually deals with those women as people? Why should we be comparing how men and women talk to Yahweh in, in the text? Well, I think it's important because when we, we look at the Bible, we see men and active characters and they get to do all the cool stuff. They get to do the miracles and they get God to show up and come over and see how they're doing. And um, well, it's not always cool because sometimes he wants you to kill your kid, but then he changes his mind. Um, but, but basically, men have all of these really amazing active roles. You know, they are the drivers of the narrative. And it just seems to me that if you're going to worship a God and you're a woman, then you should know how that being treats women. And we don't, we tend to talk a lot about how women are supposed to be treated based on the text, but I wanna look not at what Yahweh says, but what he does. And so I want to look, really compare how many times are there personal interactions between Yahweh and women? Do they always revolve around babies? And you know, what basically, how are women presented in the text? How does Yahweh treat women in the text? And this is why I think it's important to compare men and women, because we know how the guys get treated. Now let's look, look really exclusively and focus on how women are treated. In the next video, here are the questions that uh, I'm going to be looking at. Does the book have women that have a dialogue in it? Does Yahweh speak to a woman directly? If so, is it about something other than a pregnancy or a baby? And fourth, does she get a response? So we've seen you know, Moses and, and Abraham and Jacob and other men dialogue 
with Yahweh? Do women get a back and forth? That's one thing I want to look at. And because there's not going to be a lot in that video, I already know because I've looked ahead, I'm also going to have a bonus challenge, which is this. Whom, to whom does God speak more in the first five books? To women as a whole sex of the human population or to the serpent in Genesis? So in the Genesis story, at the end, when God is Yahweh, the Lord God, is giving his punishment to the serpent, he speaks, at least in the English translation, 60 words to the serpent. So my challenge in the first five books is going to find, be to find 61 words that Yahweh speaks directly to a woman. And so that's going to be video one. In the second video, I'm planning on looking at every uh, chapter more closely and finding the female characters who have dialogue and action, and then looking at where Yahweh intervenes. Now, in the in the video, the second video that I'll be doing, the next one coming up, I'll be only looking at direct communication. So no angels, no intermediaries. It has to be a, a, an interpersonal conversation or inter you know interaction. In the second video, basically anything that um, you know, if a woman prays to Yahweh to open her womb and her, you know it says Yahweh heard her and her she got got pregnant, I'm going to count that as a miracle. And the the third video there is really looking at. I mean, I'm I'm going to be looking at the interaction between Yahweh and women, but really besides pregnancies, does Yahweh perform miracles for women? Or are the miracles that are performed only around women and their children and pregnancy in, in that sort of way? So that's going to be the second video. And then I think at the end I'll kind of, of that last video, I'll wrap things up and, and look all over and, and decide when we look at women um, and their interactions with Yahweh, is it a G-O-D or is it an O-B-G-Y-N? And I have a suspicion that by the end, he's going to seem more like a gynecologist to the female half of the population, far more than an interpersonal god who performs a wide variety of miracles. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, I'll be getting a video, the second video in this three-part series out next week. And until then, I've been Christy. You guys have been awesome. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.